Lord. Amen? And he can take care of you. I'm going to be in First Thessalonians. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, tonight the prioritizing um, our three-part nature. So first, uh, I'm going to be in First Thessalonians chapter 5, and uh, I'm going to start at verse 16. I want to read this to you and uh, talk to you about uh, the nature that God made us in and how to prioritize your nature like you should. Um, you're more complex than you know, and uh, God made us all that way. We're all made in the in the uh, in, in the image of God, and God's made uh, in three parts. We're made in the same image. So I'll be reading verses you can, as you listen along. First, uh, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse sixteen. It says, "Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things." Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he which hath called you who will also do it. So ask the Lord to bless the service tonight and speak to us. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you're so good to us, Lord. And uh, we just see that last verse. Faithful is he which hath called you who will also do it, Lord. You help us. You finish all the way to the end helping us, Lord. And you put up with us. You are patient with us. And we forget about you. And we don't serve you. And you draw us with cords of love. And you are faithful. We thank you for that. And we pray that tonight you would uh, uh, just speak to us. And help us understand, Lord, the world, this crazy world, has told us the opposite of what um, we, uh, we, we are supposed to be doing and, and the way we're supposed to think. And I pray, Lord, that you would uh, speak in a great way <clears throat> and, uh, and do a great work. We pray for your power and for your spirit and for every word to be said like you want it. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for grace. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for just speaking to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Paul was praying for them that they would be complete, it says, have complete sanctification. They'd be holy in all areas of their life. And it breaks it down in verse uh, 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly all the way. And I pray that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He wanted them to have complete sanctification, holy, to be wholly sanctified. Sanctified means to be made, made clean and set apart for God in all three parts of their being. That he said, not just so you'd be sanctified holy, but then he goes further. I, and I pray, God, that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He could have just said, I pray you'd be sanctified holy, and that would have been nice. But he breaks down the three areas that are going to make them completely holy. That is a part of them, because we have these three areas, and it's part of our nature. We are three-part creatures. You're all of us... Well, we're supposed to be three-part creatures. Not everybody's a three-part creature. God's intention and God's original, original design is us being three parts. Um, but you lose one of those parts um, uh, of you uh, when you sin. And we'll get into that just a little bit. And those three parts um, we see here are spirit and soul and body. The order is important and the list of the three uh, are important. You have all three parts of you. Um, and so... Um, the Bible gives us a part of that. The first thing is all three parts matter. Okay? Now, this is so mixed up, and this the devil lies about this in so many different ways. For example, somebody will be doing something bad, and somebody else will say, well, it's the heart that counts. The heart does count, but the body does too. Okay? Somebody, you say, he, he, he went and stole my car and robbed me, but he had a good heart. Well, okay, but his actions were not good. His body was not doing good things, okay? Your spirit, your soul, and your body, all three need to be sanctified. All three are important. Your spirit interacts with what the part of you that interacts with God. I'm going to read you some verses, and, uh, and, and I'm going to be Romans. I'm going to read a lot of verses here, but your, 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 your spirit is a part of you that interacts with God. And uh, it's... It is a very sensitive part of you. Roman, uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse 15 and 16, it says, uh, For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Holy Spirit talks to our spirit, 
and tells us things. That's that part that interacts with God. It says in, in John 4, 24, it says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. Um, you can take all the religious actions that you can go to church or pray or, you know, feed the poor, or do whatever you're going to do. You can do those actions in the flesh. That does not mean that you're doing a spiritual action. Okay, you can do it to be seen of men, to impress people, or whatever reason. That's a fleshly act in that case. Your spirit is what's real with God and, and listens to God and talks to God and interacts with God. When I said some, most, many people are two-part people, it's because your spirit dies, the Bible said. Romans chapter 7 says this, when sin came, I died. Okay, um, when, when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they were told, don't eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. From the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Adam and Eve ate, and they did not die physically. They didn't die mentally. They died spiritually. And they were kicked out of the garden. They weren't with God anymore because they died spiritually. And, 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 and so the wage of sin is death. Well, if somebody died the moment they sinned, Okay, we wouldn't have anybody alive anymore. Some of you wouldn't have made it to two. Um, but uh, uh, none of us would have, would, have, would, have, would have survived, okay? <clears throat> and some of you would have made it to, would have made it to, the good kids would have made it to five or six maybe. How many is a good kid thought they'd have made it to five or six? How many thought they'd be dead by the time they were one week old? And, anyway. and uh, but, uh, but, uh, but the, 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 the spirit dies. And that's what dies. That's what the Bible says. You must be born again. You must be born of water and of spirit. Why? Because you're spiritually dead. You're a two-part creature. You're a, you're a body and a soul. You have no spirit. You can, you can try to get to God. You can't get to God because you have no spirit. Your spirit's dead. When you're born again, your spirit becomes alive again. Now you're a three-part creature again, the way God intended it when you received Jesus Christ. And that's the spirit. Um, and so, but they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. And your spirit is what interacts with God. Your soul is your mind, your intellect, your thoughts, your personality. We would say it's who you are. Um, your body is just the physical body. Your, your, what you're thinking, your mind, your intelligence, your personality, that is your soul. Okay, so the spirit that interacts with God, your soul interacts. Your mind is hearing this message right now. Your mind is processing and thinking, and your mind will make decisions. Uh, your soul um, will make decisions of whether you're going to serve God and not. Your, your soul will decide, um, uh, will, will, will choose what you do. Your soul decided to come to church tonight. Your soul um, decided to receive Jesus. Your soul is... is what your personality is. That's your whole, it's a whole big thing. And we'll get into another week of all the soul includes, because this is going to be a little bit of a series here. And your, 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 uh, your, your, your uh, body is just what we'd call our bodies. It's a physical thing. And uh, it's your physical body. Now, all three of them need to be sanctified. <clears throat> you can get spiritually dirty. You can get your soul all messed up and your soul all wrong. That's, that's very common. Your body can become vile and, and you could do a lot of bad things to your body. Some people might, might not go out and do anything bad, but they do a bunch of bad things in their mind. They're full of bitterness and hatred and, and their, their soul is, is depraved or messed up or hurting. And others, their spirit is bitter at God or uh, is, is ignoring God or, 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 or spirit has been, you know, uh, influenced by the world. And the Bible says you don't receive the spirit of the world. And, and so all three of those things are supposed to be sanctified holy. We see there in our, in our text verse in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. All three need to be sanctified. They all matter. Number two, the Bible clearly separates them. Okay, we saw that in verse 23, your body and soul and spirit. And uh, let me take you to 1 John chapter 2. God separates them super clearly. <coughs> Uh, 1 John and chapter, uh, th sorry, 3 John and verse 2 and 3. It says uh, this. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Apparently, uh, Gaius, who is, who is the person written to in 3 John, 
was a very spiritually godly person but had physical sufferings. Timothy had that. Timothy had off infirmities and he had stomach problems and stuff like that. But he was spiritually strong. He was, he had, his soul was good, but his body wasn't good. And he says, I pray that your body would be healthy like your soul is. Okay. And that was the prayer. And so uh, that is an important thing because, because you see, God says, first of all, the body does matter. And secondly, he separates the body and soul. And I want to say is that it, it's, 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 it's a little ahead of myself but they all affect each other some but they don't have to there can be people who had physical suffering but it does not affect their soul now some people um when their body's suffering their their soul gets messed up and their spirit gets messed up but it doesn't have to be that way but it's it's natural it takes the grace of god and the strength of god and the peace of god to help you not have your soul messed up or your spirit messed up okay when your body's suffering same thing your soul gets messed up and it might affect your spirit by the way get your the, the bible says for a, a bunch of things that in proverbs read proverbs it talks about a whole bunch of things that when you have certain things going on in your mind it's rottenness to your flesh the bitter spirit and the angry spirit it affects your body Okay, you, you, you just get to be a stressed out person full of anxiety and you'll say, I am having stomach problems. Yeah, because your soul is affecting your body. Okay, some of you get stressed out, you start uh, breathing heavy or start, start, heart starts doing crazy things. Your soul is affecting your body. Okay, by the way, just, just so you know, when your soul is excellent, you'll find your body usually follows to an extent. Your body will improve. Because you're, you're, because you're uh, oftentimes when your soul is down, it, you're, you just say, I can't do anything. I don't want to try. When your soul is good, you say, you know what? I have some problems, but you know what? I'm going to believe I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to eat right and exercise and take care of myself. A good, strong uh, spirit and soul helps lift you up out of things. But maybe not completely. Remember, they influence each other, but they don't have to. Okay. But, but they're all in, they're all you. They're all part of you. But God separates them. Hebrews 4.12 is a fascinating verse. It talks about how the Bible will actually separate them. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder, cut in between, the soul and the spirit. And it's the center of the thought and tends to the heart. So the word of God goes and, 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 and divides the, the body or the soul and the spirit because God separates them. Even way back in Genesis um, we find uh, uh, Genesis and uh, chapter 2 and verse 7, we find out that man started off as only a, only a body. God formed him out of clay. And verse 7, it says, The Lord God formed man out of the, out of the dust of the earth and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. See, the body was already there, no soul in it. When I believe in God breathed into him, it put, the, it put the soul and the spirit into him. Then they sinned, and then they died. I believe at that point, it's complicated and everything, but probably when God slew the animal and explained that and clothed them, being a picture of salvation, it's probably when they got their spirit back. But in between, what were they doing? Hiding from God and blaming everybody else. Why? Because their spirit wasn't, their spirit was out of tune with God. They were at a kilter. They were, they were talking a different channel. I mean, you know, everybody, the woman thou gave us me, the serpent, you, it's not my fault. And, uh, and, and, and because there is no, they weren't anchored, right? So God separates them. You can see that, that God talks about the body and the spirit being two different things. Look at the other verses, but I want you to understand the Bible separates them. Why? Because it matters in our minds because we're going to prioritize them. The next point is you've got to prioritize these three things. you got to, you got to understand you're not one big blob. You know, when you play with Play-Doh and you got three different colors and you can squish them all together and try to make one big blob of whatever color it becomes. Or you keep the colors separate and make three different things. Okay, because the red's for one thing, the blue's for another, and the green's for another, right? This is deep darker. I'm getting on your level here, Play-Doh. And, uh, and, uh, 
And, and, and you separate those things. Why? Because God separates them for a reason. And you start understanding, oh, this is my flesh doing this. My soul needs to decide this. My spirit is greed right now. That is not because I had too many anchovies in my pizza. I'm getting convicted. And you start separating the three because they're all d different, and you got to get them all three right. Amen. you got to get them all three right. Um, we are, and that's really the message tonight, is we are to put them in their proper priority. Let me take you to Galatians 5 and read that to you. Well, well again, God, look the way that God lists them, I'll read you again our text verse while you're turning there. In our text verse, God lists them, and that's the order that we should have them in. Um, <clears throat> He says, and, every, and the, the God, very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body. There's God's order. And he puts them in order. Spirit, number one. Soul, number two. Body, number three. Okay. Uh, Galatians chapter five. And uh, let me read this to you here. God's going to put them in his order. And he tells us why. It says in verse... Uh, uh, verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. There's a separation. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, then you're not under the law. Now the works of flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, it starts off with sexual immorality, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before and I told you in time past that they which use the things should not inherit the kingdom of God. It separates there. The spirit and the flesh aren't on the same page. They pull opposite directions. So when the Bible says, hey, you do not walk in the flesh. You have to know what the flesh is and separate it from the spirit here, like God does. Okay? Just a few things underneath this. We are to put them in the proper priority. Number one, uh, we will have a conflict sometimes. You have a conflict in yourself. Paul put it this, you can read Romans 7, it talks all about this. But in the end, he says, the things that I would not do, that I do, and the things that I would do, that do I not. O wretched man that I am, who shall save me from the body of this body of death? For with my mind I serve the will of God, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Okay? There's going to be a conflict, and you better have it not only knowledge of what it is, but you better have your priorities right. I remember watching during when COVID first started and it just, it was just a little tiny thing. And, 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 they, and I, I was, I was just watching what some pastors were saying the, online and stuff. And one of them got up there and he said, look, I, I want y'all to know that your physical health is my number one priority. And I said, I disagree completely. It's not biblical. Sounds good, but you certainly wouldn't have had Tyndale dying, being burned to death for printing Bibles. Jesus wouldn't have died on the cross. Paul wouldn't have gone to jail and preached the gospel. It's not the number one priority. But it's been indoctrinated into us that it is. Well, I got to take care of my bills, you know. If I don't have time for God in church, you know, God understands. So what order is that? Which order do you got there? Well, God doesn't expect me to fast. I mean, go without food. I mean, God made food taste good. Uh, in, nowadays, Christians don't accept they say thing. God wouldn't want me to be unhappy. He gave me this one to marry, and she, she's beautiful. I know that, you know, we're not married, we're living together, but God understands because we make each other happy. All the things that people say, which have nothing to do with the Bible. But it sounds spiritual. Sounds really good. But the priorities aren't there because you have a conflict sometimes. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I don't want to do right. 
Someone broke the window of the church van last night. No reason. Just broke it. Just, they don't understand they're underneath cameras. You know what flesh wants to do? Drive around until I find him and accidentally run him over. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, that, that's, you know, it's a big van. It wouldn't be much damage and everything. And, uh, but that is not the spirit. Yeah. Okay? That's the flesh. You're all looking at me. He's mean. That's, I know exactly what you're like by what you just reacted. Some went, ha, ha, ha. And some went, and that's, that's the nice ones went. And the other ones went, me too. But that's the flesh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what my spirit said? Pray for the guy. Amen. He, doesn't need, he doesn't know Jesus. Amen. He needs the Lord. Homeless guy. That probably didn't know where he was. So there for 10 minutes trying to unlock the door with his wrong key. Probably broke the lock on the key on the door. Probably didn't know where he was. Probably an addict. He needs the Lord. Let's pray for him. But see, there's a conflict there. Right? Flesh and the spirit. I'm tired. Man, I read my Bible today. Your flesh says, God wants you to sleep. And the Spirit says, you need your word more than you need sleep. And that's just, that's just what it does. And, and, and you have to get the right priority. God wants you to prioritize because there's a conflict sometimes. Number two, why we see, we see right here, <coughs> it says, verse 17, for the flesh, <coughs> excuse me, the flesh lusted against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. That's the, you cannot do the things you want to do. Because it's contrary. They're going differently. Secondly, remember the flesh is weak. Let's look at Matthew 26. Let me take you back there. Jesus this is amazing. Jesus, the son of God, his flesh is weak. He said, my soul is sorrowful unto death. Talking about his soul. Then he said, I'm weary. He said, I thirst. Jesus felt all these things. But he tells the disciples, hey guys, go pray. I need you to pray for me. And they said, I am so sleepy. And the flesh said, sleep. Jesus said, you've got to pray. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm wrestling for the souls of all mankind right now. Stay awake. And uh, he says in verse 41, he says, watch and pray, the enter not in temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. See how Jesus separates him? Look, just because your spirit wants to do something doesn't mean you're going to do it. Your flesh is very weak. That's why you, you, that's why you, you flee youthful lust. That's why you're very cautious in things, because you know how weak you are. That's why the addict, that's why the alcoholic doesn't hang out in the bar. Right? Flesh is weak. That's why the pornography addict gets security on it, gets a, a program on his phone that blocks things. That's why the person who has a problem with obesity doesn't go hang out at Old Country Buffet and say, I just won't eat very much. Right? Because the flesh is weak. And, and, and we all know that. That's why if you have a gossip problem, you don't get on the phone with spare time and talk to your best gossip friend. Because... The flesh is weak, and you got to be careful about it. And you got to be diligent that your flesh uh, is going to do wrong. It's going to do it automatically. Your flesh will not want to witness. Spirit will. You'll just choose. But the flesh is not going to go want and talk to strangers. The flesh is not going to want to give up your immorality. The flesh is not going to want to stop the things it doesn't know and please God. But the spirit does. And you have a conflict, and you got to remember your flesh is weak. Your desire will not be enough if you do not get the flesh weakened. Let me go take it to uh, Romans uh, chapter 8. So, if your sin is gluttony and overeating, you won't just, your desire to lose weight doesn't make you lose weight. Okay? If your sin is lust, your desire is not going to do it. Unless you have control of your flesh and your flesh is the weakest of the three, then you, your flesh will say, you don't want? 
to gossip anymore? I don't care. I like gossiping. See you later. I'm gossiping. And you will go into it wishing you don't, and you'll leave it regretting you did, but in between, you'll do it. Why? Because your flesh is too strong. You've not brought your fresh flesh under control. You've not crucified the flesh. You, you are, you're out of kilter. God designed to be spirit number one, soul number two, body number three. The, our, our very society and life tilts that and says number one is your flesh. Number two is your soul. Number three, yeah, if you get time, the spirit. And whether you succeed in your life will depend on if you can get that thing right. By the way, some people, their soul is number, is number one, okay? And they, they beat the, their body to death for relationships. They go in abusive relationships. Their flesh gets hurt. Their spirit's gone. But they, they, they're so needy emotionally, and the soul is ruling in that case, Okay? And that's that, that uh, they, they will always conform to the world and pressure of people, even though they want to serve God, though they don't want to go do this thing, but, and even their flesh doesn't want to do it, but their soul says, I've got to have these people's acceptance. And the soul is ruling. Okay, none of those are good. You got to have it in God's, God's order <clears throat> and, and in order to be right. Um, Romans 8, I have... We didn't get, read that yet. Verse twelve, it says, "Therefore, brethren, we are debtors to the flesh, not to live after the flesh. To li- therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live." The Holy Spirit helps you in the spiritual realm to overcome the flesh. And mortify means put to the death. It means bring under control. I'll show you a better uh, verse even than explains it than that. 1 Corinthians in chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. In verse 27. Paul says, I have to serve God. I know my flesh isn't going to do it, so I've got to get it right. But at verse 27 says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Paul says, I know I'm not going to make it if my flesh rules. So I got to be underneath my body and bring it under control. By the way, you know, there's people who are unsaved who bring their body under control. Look at elite athletes. Their soul, their desire for the championship or whatever, tells you, no, you're going to keep working out. And they're very disciplined. Military people sometimes, okay? Their their soul, because their desire, is controlling their flesh, and their flesh is not in control. By the way, when they get saved, it's very easy for them to become a good Christian because their flesh is already weak. Okay, and, and, and because they've already crucified the flesh. They've already told their body, this is what you're going to do. And the flesh doesn't always get its way. But the average American who is, I want coffee. I want a two-pump, double-drip, uh, latte, express, you know, oat milk, da 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 uh, 116 degrees with Ethiopian beans on this side and with a cappuccino on this side, all stirred together with two dips of hot chocolate on top with Frostolino on in the middle. And they order this thing. And because they're so used to getting their way, they go back around and say, this is 115 degrees. I want 117 degrees. And because they get everything just the way they want it, and they turn on the air conditioning in their heated seats, you are such a wimp. You need heated seats. Come on. And heated seats. And, and, and I mean, they're coming out. They're, the car's going to come out, you know, and massage your head while you drive and f- massage your feet and everything. I mean, and, and, and all of a sudden, you're all like, when can I get it? And, uh, and. <laughs> and you go, <clears throat> and you're going to fall asleep at the wheel is the problem, but they can drive themselves, right? Anyway, and, uh, and so um, ear, my husband's talking, earplugs, and, uh, and all, all these options. But, you know, you get everything you want all day long. You eat everything you want, and, and you get you order thing, every little thing. You know, you're one of these picky people who won't eat, won't eat a hamburger if it has pickle on it and, and stuff like that. <laughs> And, uh, and, and you're, you get everything just the way you want it in life, and you, you're pleased in every way, and you get your temperature, exact temperature you want it, and you, you sit down in your recliner, and you lift your feet, and you're just, your flesh just gets babied all the time. And all of a sudden, the preacher says, 
We need to stay extra and pray tonight for the next hour. An hour? <laughs> this church. I think there's a cult. I mean, they can't expect an extra hour. I'm not going to do that. The game starts, and and I got to get my beauty. The beauty rest isn't working, okay? And so give it up. And and you say I got to have, I got to have this, and I got to have this, and and your flesh says I'm not doing that, because why? Because you've not mortified the flesh. By the way. Here's a terrible thing. I hate that it happens. But some people become really good Christians when they start suffering a whole bunch of their life and everything gets burnt away. And all of a sudden, the spirit gets magnified and the flesh is like, it doesn't matter. This flesh, my body just falling apart. This world doesn't matter anymore. And they start getting their eyes in the spirit. And like, what was I living for? What were my priorities? And all of a sudden, the flesh doesn't seem so big. And all of a sudden, all they live for is kind of, eh. Because one way or another, usually your flesh... You know, it loses its glory after a while. Okay? And 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 you've got to go and, and <clears throat> realize you gotta bring it under control. You can't get everything you want all the time, and be a good Christian. You gotta mortify the deeds of the body. You gotta be under your body, you gotta bring it into subjection. You gotta say, you know what? I have just been lazy and laying around. You know what? I'm gonna get up at five o'clock tomorrow morning. My body is fighting me on everything. Body, you're taking a cold shower today. I'm bringing you in subjection. Body, you're just controlling everything. You know what you're eating for lunch today? Bread and butter and water. And that's what you get for lunch today. I'm drinking coffee. That's what original form is, just black stuff. And I'm not going to put anything in it. <laughs> Pastor, no. Let me be, let me die. And, 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 and you just, but you just, you just say, I'm going to, I'm going to die to self. You know what? I want to be a hermit today and I, my flesh been in control. I'm going to go say to everybody. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good to see you. Hey, nice to meet you. Or you're the person who talks all the time and you're going to crucify your flesh. You're going to keep quiet. You know, People are going to think you're throwing up. And you're going to do that. And you just keep on doing Why? Because you're going to control yourself in that way. you, you got to bring your body into subjection. And you have to do that. Um, the flesh has got to get weakened because there's going to be a conflict. And your flesh is very, is weak. It's prone to fall and do the wrong things. So you can't just give it all that it wants. Next, don't emphasize or glorify the flesh. First, uh, Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. 1 Timothy 4, 8. Don't emphasize or glorify the flesh. Uh, and and the, number, the, next, the next point will tell you why. Find the verse you're all going to like. For bodily exercise profiteth little. <laughs> Can I get a witness? And... Uh, and uh, Bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having promised the life that now is and that of which is to come. Now, it doesn't say it doesn't profit. Profits little. Okay. It can maybe give some discipline. It can maybe, uh, some, it does profit. Sometimes, okay, because your body is having so many problems, you're distracted from the things of God or you're, 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 you can't go out witnessing because you're having some physical problems. And it, there's things it can do. It's part of what God made you. It's three parts. I think you should be a good steward of the temple of God. But I don't think you have to be, it's not worth three hours a day of working out. Okay. So it's, it's not worth living for. I, I keep my body health enough, healthy enough to keep on doing what God needs me to do. When I need to go on a missions trip, and I'm going to be doing some, some packing around up in some hard places, and going to be hot and sweaty, and I'm going to be preaching four times a day in the jungle somewhere, okay, I'll get in shape. And because I need to, for the spiritual reasons. So, so I'm not saying it doesn't profit all, but, but don't prioritize the flesh. You stand there flexing in the mirror over one minute a day. Okay, forget about it. Okay, and, uh, and, and, 
and 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 uh, and it just exercises little. Um, it just profits little, and uh, it <clears throat> it it does matter because it's God's temple. But you got to be careful about that. Sometimes you don't take care of yourself, and it starts affecting your mind. A good example: of this is Elijah. Elijah ran too far, did not eat, and found himself suicidal and hopeless. And look, nutritional things make a big difference to your soul, okay? Your body, for example, vitamin D, iron, some nutrients, if you don't get those things. By the way, just eat hot Cheetos and fast food for a few weeks. And you get up in the morning, you're like, I don't want to live. Why this stupid alarm clock? I hate it. And then you go throughout the day, and you're like, I don't want to do anything. It's church time. I'm too tired to go to church. Ugh. And, and you, your emotions will be a wreck. There's a bunch of nutrients your mind needs to be healthy, to produce the things it needs to produce. And if you don't, if you eat garbage all the time, okay, then you, you, you will find that. You, some of you drink too much caffeine. You're like, you know, you, you're, it affects your soul, right? We hate you. And, and you're nasty and mean, you're, you're, you know. And, and when you become an addict to something, then you don't get your coffee. Then we hate you. And, uh, and, and because you're grumpy or, or you get addicted to, you know, whatever. It's not like I'm against coffee, not against coffee. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, matter of fact, buy me one and, uh, and, and we'll be happy and, uh, I'll preach nicer. And, uh, and, but, but, uh, but you you understand that the flesh can affect the spirit. The flesh can affect, so you should be careful, but it's, it's profits little. It's not that big a deal. Just be wise. Okay. And, and, and control yourself. Don't be like Elijah and run four days out in the middle of the wilderness and don't anything. You know, what the, you know what the angel told him to do? Eat and sleep. You're malnourished and exhausted. By the way, don't get enough sleep. All of a sudden, the devil comes and attacks you. And you're like, I don't, I don't want to fight. I'm, okay, fine. And you just give in spiritually. Why? You don't have any fight left because your body's affecting your soul. And you kind of lose it. And by the way, when you get a strong spirit, you find out that you get energy example you get your your soul excited about something you have a guy you can tell your husband i need to do this around the house i'm so tired when i get back from work and all of a sudden hunting season comes three in the morning blink <laughs> why his soul's into it the same lazy kid take out the trash oh dad i'm so tired it's been a long day at school walk in his room 2 30 in the morning <laughs> why his soul's into it. And, and, and his soul is keeping his body awake when he's exhausted. Okay? And his brain is dying, but he's, you know, he's got lots of energy. And, and, and so you got your, your, your soul affects your body. They're all intertwined. They're all part of you. But they all matter. But if you're going to neglect one, then we neglect the flesh. Because the flesh is not the priority. And then lastly... The reason you prioritize the spirit and the soul is because both of those are forever. This body is not forever. Thankfully, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10. See, the, <laughs> you know what's happening right now? It's fascinating. A lot of Christians are getting right right now because they're realizing this world is a junky old lemon of a car. And this life is overrated. What was I living for this for? If this world, by the way, if this world is all you got, you got a bad deal, man. <laughs> this world is empty, man. This, this the world and all their joy and all of their, everything they live for is crumbled with one little virus. They, I mean, their security, their money, their happiness, everything. They are so, the world's so messed up and lost right now because of a virus. Because they don't have eternal things. I mean, all they can do is keep on, all, all these people who are rich and beautiful can do is keep on having surgeries to try staying looking young and try to squeeze every little blast bit out of the empty life they have. When you serve the Lord, you have, some, you have peace and joy and eternity to look forward to. Look at Matthew chapter 10. 
how it prioritizes the spiritual and the soul over the body. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. He says, look, they can kill your body. They can't kill your soul. Only God can do that when he throws you into hell. Fear him. Because that soul is going to live forever. The body dies and rots. But the soul and the spirit will last forever. And don't worry about those who can kill your body. Because the soul is way more important than the body. Okay? And it's, it's so much more important. Uh, let me go to First Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 4, and I'll finish up there. I'm just saying that if we can get it in prioritizing and we get it right, your spirit is number one. Are you fellowshipping with God? Is God speaking to you? Are you learning about God? Are you spiritually right with God? That's going to affect your soul because you're going to have joy. You're going to have peace. You're going to have purpose. You're going to have love. And those things are going to come into your life. And you'll be strong and able to go forth and handle whatever comes in life. My day today got thrown off three times. I mean, just bombs dropped on my day three times. But you know what? That's good. Why? Because my soul is healthy, because my spirit's healthy, and because my soul is, is, is happy in Jesus. Okay? And then my body? Yeah. It's fine. Got a little ache and pain here. I'm getting older now. I've already watched enough people's lives. I know what starts happening from here. Okay? I'll take care. I'll be diligent. I'm very thankful for my health. I've been very blessed with, with good health, and, and, and I, I've worked hard at it to, to, to be able to do this, keep on doing the things you need to do for God. But, you know, you've got to realize that your body's going to die someday. It's not forever. And before it dies, it might deteriorate. By the way, I don't think most of us are going to die. I think Jesus is coming. We're going to be raptured before we die, okay? But some of us might. And, and, and that's okay because you already know, I'm, already, I'm going to break the news to you. Your body is going to die someday. It's just going to happen. So don't live for this thing, for the flesh. What's it say? Second, Tim, uh, Second Corinthians. Let me go back there. I'll finish up there. Live for what matters for eternity. First of all, receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Without Jesus, you won't go to heaven. You don't live forever. And then, um, and then follow him and prioritize the Spirit and the soul. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, though our body die, the inward man, which your soul is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, that's your body, were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in, eternal in the heavens, for in the midst we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. House is the body. You know, the, the, here's the thing. It's amazing. Your soul and your spirit live forever. Your, your soul just keeps fellowship with God. Your, your soul loses its corrupt nature when you die. Okay. But your body, you actually get a new body in heaven. I'm not going to read all the verses, but 1 Corinthians 15 says, this corruptible must put on incorruption. This, Im this mortal must put on immortality. You get a new body in heaven even. And again, you're a three-part creature, like God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's what it said in Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our image. Notice it's plural. Let us make man in our image. It's funny how God says that. The word Elohim, when he says like God, the word God there, God, God said, let us make man in our image. That's the L word Elohim. Elohim is a plural word for God. And it says, and God, singular, because one God said, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make man in our image, three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. Jesus, body, spirit, spirit, soul, father. So you talk to. Okay? And so we're made in the image of God. 
we're made that same way. And, and that's when we're, we're unfallen or when we're, uh, when we're born again. And we, we get that. And then we go, and in our lives, we decide what is going to be number one. My soul, my body, my spirit. And then what's number two? But the world you're in says the body is what matters. Number one, please yourself, your own safety, feel good about yourself and all those things. Number two, what do you want? What does your soul want? What does your emotions want? What do you want to feel? It's all about feel, 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 feel. And sometimes your feelings are wrong. So you, you lead with the spirit that brings the soul under control. And then the flesh says, then you say your flesh, we got this. We're more powerful than you. Here's what you're going to do. I don't want to witness. I don't care. You're witnessing. Come on. Love your neighbor. I don't want to love my neighbor. Love your enemy. What do you No. Yeah. Watch. Cause you tell your body what to do. But when you're led by the flesh, your body tells you what to do. I'm going to tell him off. Spirit says, don't do that. Soul says, this isn't a good idea. It's your boss. Body says, I don't care. Rah, rah, rah. Because you're out of control. You're in the wrong order. And so get it right. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? That's right. And if you can get that, you'll be, you'll be, you will be a complete creature. You'll be balanced, actually, go the way God made you to be. And you'll be happier and more victorious and be able to do what you should do. Amen? Amen? Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you for the chance to teach your word tonight, Lord. And I pray that we would not let this world make us backward. Body, soul, spirit. But we do it the way you talked about it. Soul, or spirit, soul, body. Father, I pray that you'd help us to get in order and you'd help us to prioritize these things. Feed the spirit. Listen to the spirit. Make sure we pray and talk to you. Listen to the word of God. We get our souls under control and our emotions and our minds. And I pray, Lord, that our bodies would follow and we'd be able to tell it what it's going to do and what it needs to do. Father, use these things and use the word tonight. We pray in our lives. And I pray, Lord, if somebody doesn't know you as Savior, they receive you. If they know Jesus, Father, I pray, Lord, that they would not, they would get balanced because the, 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 the world has got us all backward. <clears throat> and all we do is feed the flesh. And neglect the spirit. Lord, I pray that we would not do that and just be right. We pray for your help in these things and help us to see things as you see them in Jesus' name.